willkommen zu unserem öffentlichen Fachgespräch zur Menschenrechtslage in Eritrea und zur Rolle der Europäischen Union. Ich freue mich sehr, dass so viele unserer Einladung gefolgt sind, dass wir auf ein professionelleres Zoom-Format wechseln mussten. Uh, welcome to our talk to uh, the human rights situation in Eritrea and to the role of the uh, European Union in it. I'm so happy that so many people have joined us uh, today. My name is uh, Katrin Fugler. I'm uh, uh, the spokesperson for peace politics of the left party faction in the German Parliament, um, a member to the Committee of Foreign Affairs and to the Subcommittee on Civil Crisis Prevention. And I will try to moderate uh, this evening together with Rudi Friedrich. Hello, I'm Rudi Friedrich from the Association Connection based in Germany, and we support consensus objectives and deserters from different countries. Okay, the occasion for this is that two years ago a peace treaty was signed between Ethiopia and Eritrea, but uh, as far as the human rights uh, situation in Eritrea is concerned, we have not seen any improvement. Uh, and one of the main uh, concerns, apart from other violations of human rights, uh, is the fact that uh, in Eritrea people are conscripted uh, for a unlimited time to do national service uh, and they have no way of uh, avoiding this and this is uh, one of the main reasons why there are so many men and women from Eritrea who fled to European countries. And uh, one of the, our participants, Mr. Temezo, is from the Foundation for Human Rights in Eritrea uh, because the European Union is subsidizing to the tune of 80 million euros a road building project in Eritrea and in this road building project there are forced laborers, uh, namely people who are doing this uh, unlimited na national service uh, working there. And, uh, the Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in Eritrea uh, has stated clearly that uh, this uh, na national service is forced labor and has called on all organizations uh, uh, not to in any way participate in that. And uh, this is exactly why this found the foundation that Mr. Temelsa represents has uh, brought a suit against the European Union. And that's our topic this evening. And we want to consider what the Bundestag can do in this respect. So I would like to ask Clara Smits uh, to introduce herself and uh, tell us uh, something about uh, this EU-funded uh, road building project and other road building projects there. Thank you very much, uh, Rudy. I'm very happy to be here. My name is uh, Clara Smits, Office and Communications Coordinator at IPA, and I've been following um, uh, development aid uh, to Eritrea from the European Union uh, for several years and I've looked at it in depth, so I, uh, I will give you a bit of a background. So the development uh, to Eritrea from the European Union is not new. In fact, the EU has supported Eritrea since uh, its independence uh, in 1991 uh, from the seventh European Development Fund onwards. And uh, the European Development Fund is the main uh, budget through which aid in Eritrea is supported. The European Development Fund is not part of the EU budget, but is directly supported by member states' um, contributions. And also, uh, all projects have to be approved directly by member states. And uh, since that uh, beginning, uh, the EU has tried to bring about change in Eritrea, Eritrea through its uh, development funding. Uh, which so far has not uh, been successful according to all kinds of uh, human rights and, and UN reports. 
And the current uh, the European Development Fund um, is the 11th European Development Fund, under which in 2016, a contract was signed with Eritrea for 200 million euros in development aid. However, uh, when the uh, European Union tried to uh, negotiate about projects under the European Development Fund, the Eritrean government would not accept the strict regulations that come with the European Development Fund procedures. And that is why uh, the EU transferred 180 million of that 200 million to the European uh, Union Emergency Trust Fund for Africa. Uh, because the EU trust fund is an emergency trust fund, the regulations are less strict and therefore um, the EU could propose more far-reaching projects uh, among which the 80 million towards the road building. And also maybe as just a final uh, comment is that the EU um, used to guarantee that under its development fund no national service labour would be used but in the final road building uh, project that they have approved, the, the, the two uh, projects, uh, they have actually admitted that national service labor will be used. So the EU itself has admitted this. And uh, finally, a week ago, uh, the EU did say that they would give no further funding for road building. So they finally admitted uh, to using now under pressure a no more roads approach. But the final contract uh, for the 60 million of the road building has only just been signed and this will still be implemented. And then they also announced four uh, further smaller projects, uh, which which they will also which they have also announced and which are ex expected to be approved very soon. Uh, I think I will leave it at this in the interest yeah. of time. Thank you, Danke. Um, then uh, let's come to Mulu. Thanks a lot, Mulu, that you have time for us, and uh, you see um, it should be short. <laughs> um, we are a bit pressure with, we have a bit pressure with the time um, uh, but I'm really happy that you could join us and I ask you to introduce yourself very short and then uh, to talk about the suite uh, you launched. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Murubrahan Tamalso. I am uh, from the Human Rights for Eritrea and um, I'm from Eritrea also. Uh, hey, thank you. you. Can you get closer to the microphone, please? Uh, okay. What about now? Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Catherine for her, for her, Michael Grande, Ruud Frederick, uh, Daniela De Ryder, Ulrich Leche, Osmar von Holz, and Clara Smith as well. Our uh, thank you for the uh, the invitation. Thank you for the concern that you have. Uh, yeah, this is a big issue. Yeah, uh, and it's very important. It can help the Eritrean people to, to, to have a good condition of human rights. Uh, the project has no change and the and does not change any situation of the people in Eritrea. It is the same as the projects that the regime has done and doing now. And the project accepts that members of the local communities as well as national services, the Warsai Kalo, that they, they call from the, the, the country, uh, will do the realization of works, government policies of for, forced for the forced labor and implemented uh, at the same, uh, having good equipment that they receive from Europe. The projects accept that member of the local communities and as well as the national service program will do the road construction and rehabilitation work. Therefore, the project reinforces the application by the Eritrean government policies of forcing labors that the United Commission of Inquiry has to human rights in Eritrea has repeatedly found to be the cause of human rights abuse as well as source of crime against humanity. Since uh, the project started, the Eritrean government has closed the borders with Ethiopia. 
remilitarized the border under the pretext of TPLF, the Tigray People Liberal Front, which uh, is governed the Tigray regime, which is bo uh, the boundary to the Eritrean in the southern part. Um, as a treat, they say uh, we have afra afraid, so everyone should have to be militar mil militarized and should be uh, sitting on the bo on the on the border on the front. Since the project starts, the government of Eritrea has closed faith-based schools in the Catholic health facilities and continue to arrest members of the the Pentecostal. Uh, sorry, I couldn't un uh, understand you. Okay, uh, since uh, the project starts, uh, the, the Eritrean government uh, has closed the face based schools of the Catholic Church. So maybe um, the main point is that the money uh, development aid we should go to the people, but it doesn't not, it does not go to the people, only it goes to the regime. And uh, as a, a human rights defender, I, uh, we advised that there should be no direct projects with the government of Eritrea. Uh, projects should have to uh, focus on the, on, the, on the benefits and uh, advantages of the people of Eritrea, not the regime of Eritrea. Uh, by the way, to conclu conclu conclude our conversation, if the EU is not able to implement projects and programs in Eritrea that safeguard human rights and humanitarian principles, the EU like the, uh, should seriously consider to pro uh, to closing or reducing the missions in the country. Um, engage with the Eritrean people uh, and uh, the people who organize themselves to make a change in Eritrea. Uh, and continue to support uh, the and protect the Eritrean refugees, support and protect the Eritrean human rights defenders. And this is my uh, last, uh, uh, what do we call, advices to, to, to the German parliament that they can uh, do upon us. Yeah, herzlichen Dank. Uh, thanks a lot, Mulum. <coughs> Uh, for your introduction. Um, um, then uh, we would like to come to Awad Kesete. Um, he is um, uh, from Wuppertal and uh, maybe you can introduce yourself. Uh, the question to you is, uh, what do you think uh, German parliamentarians could do? <laughs> what is your idea how uh, we we could help you in uh, the work against uh, the Eritrean regime and uh, the work for human rights and democracy in Eritrea. Uh, my name is Kesita Awit and I'm uh, from uh, an organization in the Düsseldorf Wuppertal uh, region, uh, an Eritrean organization uh, which uh, works uh, for uh, human rights and for learning from one another as its name says, and I'd like to thank uh, the members of the Bundestag for the invitation to take part in this discussion. And we'd like to thank you also in the name of all the people who are persecuted uh, inside Eritrea and all the people who uh, inside and outside Eritrea are uh, struggling for uh, human rights. And as an interpreter at the German government's uh, Bureau for Migration and Refugees, and as a social worker uh, for uh, with working with underaged uh, uh, refugees uh, and uh, as a um, uh, uh, as an activist uh, in an organization uh, i'd like to uh, I personally ex experience very directly all the the sufferings to which uh, people inside and outside Eritrea, uh, both within the country and on the, in their flight via Sudan and uh, Egypt and Libya and across the Mediterranean Sea are uh, subjected to and the traumas which they have experienced. Uh, 
And also my own personal experience uh, years ago and research in the con in Eritrea, uh, I uh, am uh, very well aware of uh, what happens there uh, also because I have family members who are uh, subjected to, to oppression uh, and repression by this oppressive regime. Yeah. In our uh, view, the focus of this discussion should be on uh, what, uh, how, what, and how a responsible uh, approach uh, and actions by the German government towards uh, the uh, oppressive regime in Eritrea should be. And uh, based on that, uh, also how uh, the German government uh, should influence uh, EU policy uh, with the objective of uh, uh, eliminating the causes of uh, uh, flight of refugees from the country and uh, working towards uh, overcoming this uh, dict uh, military dictatorship and uh, achieving uh, democratic uh, development in Eritrea. Uh, we'd like to point out that any further uh, uh, collaboration and, and support uh, for the Eritrean uh, uh, government uh, is would be uh, both uh, in violation of uh, its own and the EU's own uh, uh, rules about human uh, rights and uh, uh, would only serve uh, to extend and continue uh, the, the rule of this uh, dictatorship. So we call on these two organizations, the German government and the EU, to uh, uh, stick to their own objectives uh, and principles. And even investments in the infrastructure that are intended to improve the living conditions of the population, uh, strengthen and promote uh, this uh, unjust regime and uh, uh, serve to extend its rule. And before German investments are made, uh, there must be uh, fundamental changes in uh, the uh, conditions in Eritrea. Okay, uh, these projects must serve to improve the living conditions of the populations, for example, in public health, uh, vaccination campaigns, uh, uh, education, uh, improvement of the agricultural, and there must be, you must en ensure that the funds do not serve to enrich the regime itself or individual members of it. Uh, the German government and the EU should rather seek to collaborate with the, these people who are oppressed in so many ways. One way to do this it would be to uh, uh, support and uh, subsidize the uh, associations and, and uh, society, uh, societies of the uh, democracy movement in the Eritrean diaspora. And so, uh, we, and thus we demand that human rights be respected and uh, no aid that uh, benefits the regime and no uh, economic uh, or, or um, military uh, negotiations because all uh, levels of society are controlled and oppressed by the regime. And we uh, call for uh, perceptible uh, and uh, effective uh, support to the democracy movement in the uh, diaspora and also the cooperation between the German government and the EU with opposition forces in Eritrea. And so thank you for your attention. Ja, danke. Thank you, Awet. Nun übergebe ich wieder an meine Co-Moderatorin, an Katrin.
Okay, thank you. I'd like to particularly thank the uh, my fellow uh, Bundestag members from four different parties for participating here and uh, like to give them a chance uh, to uh, address their questions to the specialists here and start with uh, uh, Otmar von Holtz. Uh, although normally you start with the representative of the largest party, uh, this time I call on him because he's also a deputy in the subcommittee and is from the Green Party. Okay, uh, I would uh, like to first of all thank uh, Mr. Albert uh, for uh, uh, giving us uh, some insight into uh, the diaspora there. and uh, I would like to say that not just with regards to uh, Eritrea but also uh, with regards to other countries where there are conflicts that uh, uh, we in Germany, with our with a rather good reputation, uh, should be a more forthright and in um, working together with them and with advocating uh, for human rights and particularly say if we're in the Security Council, as uh, that we could uh, do a lot more in that respect. Mehr Menschenrechts, um, um, basierte Politik einzufordern. No, and, and so I should think that not only should the uh, German government be uh, uh, more clear and forthright uh, in uh, demanding improvements in human rights, uh, but that it should also, uh, based on the uh, findings of the investigative uh, uh, commission, uh, be prepared to uh, have these violations of human rights uh, uh, referred uh, to the uh, to the international court and the UN for uh, consideration. And I should also say that uh, since the African Union uh, uh, plays a substantial role, uh, I think the German government should be making much more effort uh, to uh, engage with the African Union uh, to uh, bring about uh, some uh, improvement in, in the question of human rights in Eritrea and in, in, in general in the Horn of Africa. Uh, thank, thank you, Otmar. Thank you, Otmar. Um, the, the next person to speak from the side of the parliamentarians is my uh, very respected uh, colleague, Dr. Daniela de Rida. She's a member of the Social Democratic Party, and she's also a member to the uh, Committee on Foreign Affairs, and she's uh, promoting uh, the role of women in foreign politics, which is, which is really a, a, a good work she does in our uh, cooperation. So, Daniela, um, Daniela, Dr. Daniela de Rida is a very respected colleague of me from the Social Democratic Party, also a member of the Auswärtigen Ausschuss, and a big supporter of the stronger Vernetzung and Zusammenarbeit of women in the foreign politik. And I freue mich sehr, that she heute hier ist. Daniela, wenn you have Fragen or Anmerkungen, hast, du hast jetzt das Mikro. Okay, thank you, uh, Catherine, and thank you, the uh, various uh, uh, experts and specialists who have uh, come this evening. I'm uh, not speaking not so much as, a, as an expert, but as someone who has questions, uh, and I uh, like to uh, say yes, first of all, uh, that the that we should be glad that the uh, Agreement on the borders between Ethiopia and Eritrea uh, has been uh, that that at least has been uh, achieved. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we should uh, be concerned with the massive human rights violations that are continuing in Eritrea. 
And what can we do about that? Uh, and uh, in particular with regard to the EU, which is what we're particularly talking about this evening, uh, Eritrea is important because that is the fifth largest source of uh, people coming from Africa to into EU countries, look, and particularly young men who are looking for a chance to earn money here to support their families back home in Eritrea. And uh, at, the, at the same time, we know that this is a, a repressive regime there. And these road uh, building projects, uh, these are one of the things that the EU has uh, done because this was their hope that they would improve the economic situation in Eritrea and uh, also may uh, improve the possibilities for tourism and trade there and, and thus uh, improve the economic situation. And uh, so we can uh, both, it's not just uh, in regards to uh, Within the EU, uh, we all there's also, uh, as uh, uh, my uh, fellow uh, Bundestag member Otmar von Holtz has pointed out, there is also so the fact that we will uh, uh, Germany is one of the one of the temporary members of the uh, UN Security Council that we can the, exert pressure there. And uh, we should also not forget that uh, Germany will uh, soon also be uh, for a short time uh, the uh, chair of the uh, EU Council of uh, Ministers and so that we can th there also uh, exert uh, some pressure to and ensure uh, for example, uh, by insisting that the uh, labor uh, standards of the International Labor Organization are observed uh, to exert uh, some pressure for uh, uh, constructive uh, changes in that way. Thank you, uh, Dr. De Ridder. Thank you, Dr. De Ridder. Um, uh, now, the next one to uh, speak is my colleague uh, Ulrich Lechte. He's a member to the Liberal Party and uh, also uh, works in the Committee on Foreign Affairs. And uh, he is also active in the protection of uh, refugees' rights. And uh, I'm very glad that he's here. So, the next uh, uh, meiner Bundestagskollegen here is uh, Ulrich Lechte from the FDP, der äh, auch Mitglied des Auswärtigen Ausschusses ist und als, außerdem ein Verteidiger der Menschenrechte von Menschen auf der Flucht. Und ich freue mich sehr, dass äh, du heute hier bist, Uli, du hast das Wort. Ja, vielen Dank, liebe Katrin. Ich habe den Unterschied zwischen Daniela als äh, sehr wertgeschätzter Kollegin und dem Kollegen von der FDP zur Kenntnis genommen. Er ist verbucht. In the Bundestag, ja I myself, I'm 42 years old. I'm from the uh, beautiful Bavarian city of Regensburg. And I'm also there in the subcommittee on the UN and international organizations of the Bundestag. And I was interested, I've been interested in following uh, what's been said this evening, uh, in particular what's been said by people who are directly uh, affected and involved. So uh, thank you, Dr. Albert, and thank you, Mr. Temelso. Uh, I'm uh, the rapporteur for my party uh, for African uh, 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 American and, and Australian affairs, and uh, thus I had the honor of speaking uh, for my party uh, during the, the 2018 debate in the Bundestag on Eritrea. We must not forget that on that same day, uh, the president of Ethiopia, who had received the Nobel Peace Prize uh, for the peace uh, agreement, uh, had called on the international community 
uh, to uh, reduce the pressure on Eritrea. And uh, so therefore, uh, we should regard such matters as this project from the point of view of uh, the uh, peace between Ethiopia and Eritrea and uh, a road building project like that is intended uh, to encourage that as we like to say uh, roads uh, promote peace but of course uh, and the use of this uh, uh, national uh, service, uh, which is, uh, as we know, uh, forced labor and is recognized in Germany and in the EU as uh, grounds for granting political asylum uh, must be condemned. And so there is, we have uh, the problem. I may be, uh, some of you will want to stone me for saying this, but we have no alternative to, uh, for any such project than uh, to cooperate with the government, because in that one party uh, state, there is no organized uh, political opposition. There is only uh, the government uh, as a, an a actor and it's only outside Eritrea that we have any uh, chance of contacting and working together with the opposition. Uh, and Korea, uh, only in the diaspora uh, can we uh, talk to them and cooperate. And when this project was initiated, uh, there were great hopes uh, that this peace process uh, would uh, lead uh, also to Im internal improvements in Eritrea. And we all know all the uh, con conflicts uh, all around the world, uh, uh, in the Near East, in, in Kashmir, in, in Korea and everywhere. Uh, but here was a case where uh, there was an actual peace agreement and so there was a very hopeful attitude uh, among people uh, that uh, things would get better there. But unfortunately, as we have seen, that the, those hopes did not materialize. So I would like to pose this question uh, to uh, the uh, people here, the experts who are not, who do not belong to the political class, uh, is what can we uh, expect in the next, say, 10 years in Eritrea? Uh, is it possible that uh, when the president, who is after all 74 years old, uh, dies, that there would then be uh, uh, reform forms and improvements uh, or do do we have to uh, expect uh, at some point a revolution uh, because nobody can tell me that all the five million or so Eritreans uh, are all all support this president and his uh, country and you'll excuse me for saying so his socialist system that has failed so abysmally uh, uh, dear Uli, uh, thank you very much for your input, um, uh, that, uh, but not for the sentence in which you try to bring my, me and my party in any connection with the regime uh, in Eritrea. Uh, this is, uh, uh, ev everything else you said is something we must discuss about in the normal, uh, um, respectful way that we are uh, doing our and now I'd uh, like to uh, address one point which we actually have some control over. That's how uh, German government uh, uh, authorities uh, deal with uh, refugees from Eritrea. Uh, I'd like to point out there was just been a report from Connection and from uh, the refugee aid organization Pro Asyl uh, that the rate of uh, recognition as political refugees 
of applicants in Germany uh, from Eritrea has sunk to uh, five and a half percent uh, five years uh, ago in 2015, 95% of the applicants uh, were granted recognition as political refugees in Germany and were thus in a protected status uh, and <coughs> not um, threatened by uh, uh, the regime in Eritrea. Uh, ha getting their hands on them. Okay, for the applicants for uh, political asylum, uh, this means that they are in a much worse situation and status and they are rendered dependent on the Eritrean government uh, in some aspects because they, in their situation, they are required to go to the Eritrean embassy uh, to get uh, ID papers. And in order to get those papers, they are required by the Eritreans to sign a uh, confession of guilt in which they uh, confess that they have violated uh, Eritrean law by uh, leaving the country and are thus uh, completely subject to uh, the legal system uh, as such as it is in Eritrea. And what makes me really uh, mad is uh, my impression that the German government is doing everything they can to reduce the number of Eritrean refugees in Europe, and in particular in Germany, but uh, very little or nothing to uh, eliminate the reasons for them fleeing. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you all for the uh, statements. Um, thanks a lot for your statements. Um, I have um, some short comments. Um, uh, the discussion about the situation of refugees in Germany was a very um, important point for the chat room as well. So thanks, Kat Katrin, for um, saying what is the situation. Um, we had an, another expert talk in December uh, last year where we mentioned especially this point, how is the situation of refugees uh, in Germany? Uh, what about the refugee policy of the European Union? Um, uh, you can, uh, we gave a um, statement from Pro Asylum Connection to this point, and uh, we have this in English and in German as well, so you can take a look on our website for this. Heute haben wir die die Frage, wie es mit EU-Fördergeldern umzugehen. Und wir haben die Frage von Ulrich Schlechte, wie sehen die Möglichkeiten für die nächsten zehn Jahre aus? Uh, today we have uh, the question, what about the uh, funds, the support of Eritrea with uh, funds from the European Union? Maybe the next ones um, uh, for um, we, we have to expect and uh, what are the um, possibilities for the next 10 years, a question Ulrich Lechte mentioned. And I would like to ask um, Mulu Eberhan Timelso and uh, Awit Kesete especially to give a short answer to both questions and um, to uh, maybe to um, give some information and your opinion to it. Okay. Uh... Let me answer for the, the first question. Um, the engagement of the European Union towards Eritrea should be uh, more focused on uh, the situations of the people. The situation of the Eritrean society at this time has no, uh, uh, we cannot measure it. It is the worst thing that the whole uh, nation is like an open uh, prison. So uh, 
to a prisoner, you cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot add more uh, jobs that you try to release from the prison. And at this time, the Eritrean people is needs help and engagement towards the unconstitutional government. A government without constitution, a government without law, a government without any agreement. It's not the people, uh, uh, the government belongs to not the, to the people, but the people, all the people, the Eritreans belong to the government or to the regime. Uh, there are a lot of democ democratic movements all over the world in the diaspora. The Eritreans are centralized themselves to make a change in Eritrea, to make a constitutional government in Eritrea, to make a democratic a state and that can serve to its own citizens. And that's why all the Eritreans who live in diaspora are at this time uh, they are demobilizing, they are uh, initiating uh, yeah, initiate themselves towards uh, to make a, a government in exile and a, a constitution there, then, then uh, they, can, they can make more pressure on the, on the uh, regime, then the, we, we will try to free uh, our uh, society. That is, so I don't think that that will take 10 years or five years I hope uh, a change will uh, ha happen at, uh, in a short period of time because uh, more than uh, one third of the Eritrean youngsters, the productive youngsters, are living in outside Eritrea, so in yeah. Africa, in Europe, in America, and they can help, it can initiate and it can make sense to make a change in Eritrea. Yeah, danke. Thanks a lot. Um, now we have three minutes left. Uh, so um, a short answer from Aud Kesete. Um, so wir haben noch drei Minuten. Aud, um, ich hoffe, das reicht dir, um noch eine kurze Antwort darauf geben zu können. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Temelso has uh, uh, summed up a lot of the things today. I just, I would say they have one a uh, question that still remains is how can uh, the uh, governments here in uh, Germany and so on, how can they here and because there's, it's very difficult to work with any other groups inside Eritrea, uh, how can the government here uh, work with and, and support uh, uh, groups and associations here in Germany and in Europe? Uh, and that's something that you need to consider. So my, uh, so my question is really, uh, how much real interest is there in the, uh, among, in the EU and uh, among the German government in working with the Eritreans? Uh, so, so my request would be that this w should not be a one-time event, uh, but that the people who come together for this uh, meeting should continue to work together in future on, on this question. Land agieren oder in Europa in anderen Ländern, aber hier für uns mal jetzt hier in Deutschland agieren, mit denen gearbeitet werden. Um, I would like to say thanks uh, for all uh, to all participants uh, that you have time and uh, give your opinions to it, and I think we just started the discussion and it shouldn't be the end and uh, we have now open important open questions danke rudi thank you uh, rudi um, ich möchte mich uh, auch bei allen teilnehmenden bedanken und ich möchte mich vor allem bei rudi bedanken der den anstoß für diese veranstaltung gegeben hat uh, thanks to all participants and uh, especially to rudi who uh, moved us forward to make uh, this possible tonight uh, and it will for sure not be the last time that we come together and I must apologize uh, to the uh, auditory to the people uh, listening and looking to us uh, that we don't have time to make more comments or statements or questions from your side um, next time we will be uh, 
better organized and we make it possible. Also ganz herzlichen Dank auch an die bis zu 61 Zuhörer, Zuschauer, die hier heute teilgenommen haben und für die wir leider keine Diskussionszeit mehr erübrigen können. Das nächste Mal werden wir technisch besser aufgestellt sein, das kann ich schon mal versprechen und dann werden wir das möglich machen und das wird ja, dies wird ja auch nicht das letzte Mal sein. Und ähm, ich fand, es war äh, wirklich eine wichtige Veranstaltung und nehme da ganz viel mit für meine weitere parlamentarische Arbeit. Und ich äh, sehe den Uli Lechte nicken. Ich glaube auch, äh, du hast hier einiges mitgenommen und auch die beiden äh, Kollegen, die jetzt äh, nicht mehr dabei sind. So, for me, it was a very important uh, uh, occasion to get uh, some insights, which I can take to my parliamentarian work. And I also see that my colleague from the Liberals, uh, Uli Lecht, is also uh, uh, signaling that he also takes something with him. And we will keep thinking about what we are going to do with all the things we heard and all those things we did not have time to hear yet. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a, a nice evening and uh, stay healthy and well. Um, take care. Uh, goodbye. Um, vielen Dank an alle. Bleiben Sie gesund und uh, passen Sie auf sich auf. Und wir uh, hoffen, dass wir uns alle bald wiedersehen. Haben Sie noch einen schönen Abend. Dankeschön. Okay, Dankeschön. Danke, thanks a lot. Bye bye. Und vielen herzlichen Dank. Dankeschön. Und okay. Katrin, bis Montag. Bye. <lacht> Thank Tschüss. you very much, everyone. Tschüss.